Alright guys, welcome to your 19th biology tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk to you guys about the other type of passive transport that's called osmosis. Now before we start talking about this I want to show you guys a little demonstration and throw out a few vocabulary words because it's going to help understand exactly what osmosis is. So say that we had, I don't know, just a cup Say we grabbed a cup from our, you know, cupboard and we filled it up with water. So let me go ahead and throw some water molecules in here. Pretty freaking sweet looking water molecules if you ask me. Now you have your water molecules right here and you also have, I don't know, let me throw some. We'll say that this is salt water. So the red is salt and I might as well go label that salt. And the blue is the water molecules. Let me draw a few more. So the blue is water. Look at that nice color-coded diagram. Now let me go ahead and choose another color because this of course together whenever you add salt and water mix it together it's called a solution. And you guys already know what a solution is. I'm not gonna go ahead and talk about that. I'm not, you know, pretending that you guys are dumb or anything. But what I do want to go over is the parts of the solution in this, well, solution. The first one is the solute, which is the salt. So the salt is also called a solute, S-O-L-U-T-E. Now the definition of a solute is inside a solution, which we're looking at right here. It's the substance that's dissolved in another substance. So basically whenever you have salt water, you have a little bit of salt and it's dissolved inside the water. So the substance that is dissolved in another one is the solute. So the salt is the solute, simple enough. Now the water also has its own word and this is called the solvent. So S-O-L-V-E-N-T. So basically, whenever you have a solution, one of the substances does the dissolving, which is the water, and the other substance dissolves inside it, which is the salt or the solute. All right, so now we got that done. A solution basically has a solute, which is the little thing that dissolves in the bigger solvent. So now, what the heck are we talking about this for? Because we were supposed to be talking about freaking osmosis, and now you got us talking about solutions. Well, it's because whenever we talk about osmosis, it's basically when the definition is when water moves, moves from where it's more pure to areas where it has more solutes. Okay, let's go ahead and open up another slide and see if we can understand this a little bit better. So say that we have some membrane right here, and I'll just go ahead and label this. This is the membrane. And we can say it's any, you know, uh, semi-permeable membrane. Of course, whenever we're talking about in biology, it's going to be the cell membrane. But for right now, just imagine it as any semi-permeable membrane. And say that we have a bunch of water molecules on the left-hand side. So this is a bunch of water. And since we are trying to be scientific, I'll go ahead and label it as H2O. Now, we have a couple on the right-hand side. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, three or so. But aside from that, we have a bunch of, I don't know, let me think of a good solute, something like sucrose. Well, it can be like salt, sucrose, any kind of sugar, anything that dissolves in water. But we'll go ahead and draw sucrose. Now, obviously, we looked at the chemical structure for sucrose, and we know that it's a lot bigger than these small water molecules. So it cannot cross the membrane. If it tries to, it doesn't work out. And, and again, my sucrose looks like a thing of grapes. Why is it that every time I draw to, try to draw a molecule bigger than water or oxygen, it always end up looking like grapes? I don't know. But, but anyways, what's going to happen here is if I grab a, let's see, I'll grab green. So what's going to happen here in the process of osmosis, remember, it's when water move, moves from areas where it's more pure to areas where it has more solutes. So again, this right here is the solute, and we'll just say that it's sugar, we'll say it's sucrose. So basically, if this were a solution, which this is over here, it would have a solute which is a sucrose and it's dissolved in the water which is the solvent so this process 
osmosis, what would happen naturally is across a membrane, the water would start to move over here. Why is that? Because when water diffuses across a membrane from areas where it's more pure, see this is pretty much pure water, 100% over there, to areas where it has more solutes, that is the process called osmosis. It's different than diffusion because diffusion is just from areas where it has higher concentration to lower concentration. The key that we need to remember in osmosis is water moves to areas where it has more solutes right there so that's key without the solutes osmosis would not happen it would be called something else so again one more time the process of osmosis is when water moves from areas where it's more pure to areas where it has more solutes so water is still the solvent and the solutes are still sugar and of course whenever you combine them all you have a solution through a process called osmosis now of course one last time whenever we're looking at cells instead of a simple membrane this thing right here would actually be the cell membrane or plasma membrane but for this demonstration just go ahead and you know you don't have to remember all that for right now so in the next tutorial what I was planning on doing is I was going to talk to you guys about something called active transport but what I decided to do is instead of covering it in the next tutorial I'm actually going to cover it in a couple tutorials because I want to cover some other things first and once I cover those core concepts you guys are going to understand a lot more about active transport in a lot more useful fashion but for right now just remember that special proteins called active transport proteins what they do is they use the energy in cells to concentrate molecules inside or outside of the cell and actually you know what just remember this active transport uses energy from the cell to move large molecules across the membrane so active transport uses energy from the cell passive transport like osmosis and diffusion does not require any energy from the cell and later on We'll talk more about active transport, but for now, just remember, all about osmosis. If you don't understand, watch the video again. And now that we understand about diffusion and osmosis, which are the two types of passive transport, we can go ahead and move on to something a little bit more interesting. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.